crossing Lake Galilee, and then there was a storm. They went to Jesus because he was very deeply asleep. They woke him up and asked him, don't you care that we are perishing? They were not dead. But nature was very, very uncooperative at that time. They described their context as they were about to perish. You remember the story of the lost son in Luke chapter 15. When this boy comes back home, his father says, my son, this son of mine was dead, but is alive again. He was lost, but is now found. So we can say that that boy, even if he was not dead, his situation was like perishing. At least in the mind of the father, this boy had perished. In the reading according to John, we read about when the children of Israel were in the wilderness and the snakes were biting them and they were dying. They were perishing. So what is it that we can say about this word perish? It is a situation of hopelessness. People were hopeless. And when you look at the story of the lost boy, he had no food to eat. Actually, he had no money. He had wasted all his money. He had no friends or relatives. The environment was very unfriendly because he was wait eating what the pig were eating. We can say instead of growing, he was retarding. He was dying, just like the people in the wilderness. We can say he was sickly. He was naked. Because the father says, put on him a new cloth. He was no longer to be called his father's son. Perishing is like being in the hands of the wrong people. We can say it is possible to have hell on earth. You can be living, but you can say you are in hell as good as perishing. Now, what is eternal life then? We can say eternal life is the opposite of what I have said. It's the opposite of perishing. Jesus came so that whoever believed in him can have eternal life. Not perish, but have eternal life. And we know in John 10.10, 10, he says he came so that we can have life and life in abundance. So this life and life in abundance, we can say is almost similar to eternal life. So those who believe in Christ have eternal life. Those who believe in Christ are those who are born again. They're saved. And what do they have? Or what should they have? Probably we don't have all this. But what should we have? Perishing, the boy who was perishing had no food. So those who believe in Christ, they should have food on the table. So having life and life in abundance is having food on the table. Now when God created Adam and Eve, he gave them permission to eat of all the trees 
all the fruits and they were many. They could not eat all the fruits, all the trees, all the vegetables which were there in Eden. So having eternal life, having life in abundance is having food on the table. Praise the Lord. And one of our emphasis as we go to New Year as the Anglican Church is to exhort all our members that we must work to have food on the table. Because minus food, we don't have life in abundance. We can't say we are going to heaven in empty stomachs. Because the land of Canaan was a land of abundance, milk and honey. So we must work to have food on the table. That is what eternal life, life in abundance, entails. Having food on the table. And one of Jesus' teaching is that we pray that we may have our daily bread. That is, when you wake up in the morning, you can have breakfast. Not unless you are fasting for a purpose. Having food on the table is very, very key for believers of Christ. So Christians, we must work to have food on the table. And as we work to have food on the table, we believe in Jesus. So if you have Jesus, you believe in Jesus, what, we, what that means is that you have Jesus in your heart. So we talk about Jesus in the heart and the food on the table. We thank God that when Jesus came and in some situation people had no food, he gave them food. Feeding of the 5,000 in Bethesda. Jesus did a miracle to ensure that there was food on the table. Changing water into wine in the corner of Galilee. Jesus is ensuring that there is something on the table. So eternal life, abundance life, means Jesus in heart, because you believe in him, then you must have food on the table. Of course, we must thank God that Kerenyaga, we have a lot of food. But it's unfortunate that some of this food goes to waste. Today, the price of bananas is at the lowest. So bananas are ripening in the people's farms because there is no market. Hope that when we have Jesus at heart, Jesus can help us and we can work so that we can convert that banana which is going to waste into food that can be stored so that when there is no rain like it is threatening at this time we can be assured that we are still have food on the table tomatoes in Kirinyaga goes to waste I know the governor had been promoting piggy farming but as a piggy farmer I know piggy farmers we are crying because there is no market for our pigs. So what does it entail for us to say we have food on the table? When food is going to waste. I happen to be the chairman of Anglican Development Services in Kenya. And we had a meeting last week. And we are starting to distribute food in Turukana. Because... There are people there who are crying to the church because they don't have enough to eat. And I know one time one of our predecessors, Bishop Okuru, said that it's high time instead of praying to God to give us bread for today, we ask those who have a lot of bread 
to give to those who do not have. Because there are people who are storing more bread than, than they will ever eat in this life. Food on the table. What does it, does it entail to have life in abundance? It entails having money in the pocket. Money in the pocket. Jesus talked very positively about money. You know, this boy who was lost and was perishing, he had wasted all his money. He had money, but he wasted it. Christians, we should strive to have money in our pockets. We have just given thanks so that we can buy public address so that when Sawadi invites us for the wedding, there can be a PA. That was asking for money. If we don't have money in our pockets, what shall we give? Brethren, we must pray to God and we must work so that we can have money in the pocket. You can't talk about eternal life when you can't meet your own needs, when you can't pay school fees for your children, when you can't pay your tithe, when you can't give in the church. Even beggars, they beg for money. And the Bible says very positively, the voice of God, silver and gold is mine. Money belongs to God. And that money, we must pray that it gets into our pockets. It gets into our bank accounts. Having life in abundance is being able to meet your basic needs. Jesus gave more than 40 parables. 11 of the parables were about money. Jesus used money to teach us spiritual truths. For example, the parable of the hidden treasure. And somebody discovering that treasure. The parable of the talents. Jesus gives that story to help us understand that he expects us to use the money we have for profit so that we can have money in our pockets and even money to share with the needy. Abundance life, eternal life entails having money in our pocket. So Christians, let not desire to be poor. We must desire to have money in our pocket. So, so far I've talked about having Jesus in the heart, having food on the table, and the money in the pocket. That is abundance. Then finally, abundance life entails being in right relationship with other people and nature. Being in right relationship with the people and the nature. Once you have Jesus in your heart, you have food on the table. You have money in the pocket. It's not yours alone. You must share it with the people. Remember the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. We can imagine that the rich man who used to dress in purple and he was moving from party to party. We can confuse that to be Abadan's life. But he had a problem with people, especially the poor and the needy. He locked them 
from his compound. They were struggling with the dogs to feed from the dustbin, and he knew it, and he did nothing about it. And as a result, he went to hell. Or even the rich fool who had a bumper harvest, and he said, I am now going to store, and I'm going to relax and enjoy. And that night, God told him, so will be requested of you. When we have Jesus in our heart, we have food on the table, we have money in the pocket, we must ensure that we live right with our neighbors. Let us get involved in the charity work. Let's support those who are struggling with the medical bills, school fees, clothing, those who have no food. And let us be in right relationship with the nature. Because nature, as Wangari Madai said, can be very unforgiving. And because God has given us some rain, take this opportunity to plant a tree. I'm happy that at the end of this service, we'll be requesting His Excellency, the DP, to plant a tree. When you get back today, kindly ensure that tomorrow you plant a tree. In your farm, if you have nowhere to plant a tree, kindly give me a call. I will take you to a church place where you can plant a tree. Let us take care of the environment. We are a blessed county. Rivers flowing from east to west. Rivers flowing down. But if you are my age, you can testify that we have seen that the volume of water in these rivers have been going down, down and down. Keringa River is no longer the same. Mukengeria River is no longer the same. So we must ensure that we take care of our environment. So let me summarize what I have said. Jesus at heart. Food on the table. Money in the pocket. Right with the people and the nature. Are we together? Praise the Lord. So all saints all saints Christ when we leave I'm not sure how big your congregation will be you have built a big big sanctuary that you preach and who forgive sins because people must be told, you must be born again. For that, Jesus came into this world. And he told Nicodemus in no uncertain time, terms, enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. Right relationship with Jesus. Let us feel this sanctuary with the people who are coming to seek Christ. And once they come, let us teach them that they must have food on their tables. Let us encourage them to work hard so that they can have money in their pockets. Let us live right with our neighbors and the nature. At verse 17, where we concluded, this is what it says. For God did not send his the world to condemn. So if you are not born again, we are not condemning you. If you don't have food on the table, we are not condemning you. If you don't have money in your pocket or in your account, we are not condemning you. And if your relationship with the neighbors and other people is not right, we are not condemning you. Because it says, he came into the world so that through him, 
it might be saved. So Jesus came so that we might be saved. Are you here today and you want to be saved? Are you here today and you wish to be born again? Because that's the best thing we can give you as the church. Our mandate is to preach the kingdom of heaven. And the only, that, the only way to go to the kingdom of heaven is to be saved. And that kingdom of heaven is not in the future. It is here with us. It entails what I have said. Are you here? And you do wish to give your life to Christ. Is there anyone who came to this service? And you do wish to surrender your life to Jesus. From up there, if you are there, you can raise up your hand. I will pray for you. If you want to be saved. If you are down here, na niyo kuenda kubonoka, ambarali ya jira yaku, na nitogo kubowera. Mundu kuenda kubea na moyo wake, kule kristo. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you came into this world so that we can have life and enjoy life. Today, and we can enjoy eternal life in the future. The only way for that is accepting you as Lord and Savior. All these people, they came into this sanctuary. Lord, I want to breathe. They came so that they can hear your message. And your message is a message of salvation. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to speak to us so that those who are saved can continue pressing on. Those who are not yet saved, we leave them into your hands, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will convict them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is time to give our offering. It is time to give our offerings. Wakati wa sadaka. We shall put it here. Wale wako uko. Patakuja.